Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Tom Marquand. Tom, how are things? Yeah, very good. Obviously, um, pretty busy at the moment, but uh, thoroughly enjoying the run we're having. And uh, yeah, long, long may uh, this success last. Yeah, absolutely. It's been, it's been an incredible year, and, and 2020 has been a, a strange year. But I just want to begin with uh, the English King situation, and I thought for for a 22 year old, I thought you handled that incredibly well. That it was. Um... I mean, it, it was obviously not ideal, sort of what was going on at that point in the year. It was just as everyone was trying to get a bit of a run on. But look, it, it, it was one of those things. I mean, I was probably lucky to, to jump aboard him in the Derby trial anyway. And um, he was an impressive winner and looked looked for every bit like he, he had all the credentials you'd want going into the Derby. But um, yeah, it was one of those things, you know, Bjorn, Bjorn Nielsen, the owner, you know, he pays pays the bills and sort of it was his prerogative to, to have the best jockey aboard. And um, I mean, I can hardly deny him the fact that Frankie de Dore is one of the best pilots in the world. So uh, it was it, it was a shame for me. It ended up working out really well, fortunately. But um, that was something that you know happens on a daily basis, but just probably not quite on that scale, so it doesn't get noticed. Well, one thing that did work out for you was the the St Ledger. Um, you were lucky enough to, to take the St. Ledger in, in dramatic, under dramatic circumstances. Yeah, I like it. you couldn't have couldn't have written the script really any better. But um, obviously, English King got declared. I was down on him, and then there was a sort of a, there was a better race on the Sunday for him in France. So um, with the quarantine rules, I couldn't. I, I, well, I, I wasn't going to go over and ride him, and, and Frankie rode him over there. But obviously, that meant I was left without a ride and. With Shane Cross failing his um, coronavirus test, having to come over, uh, it meant Galileo Chrome came free, and actually um, another horse, State of Rest, who are who are now on in tomorrow in the in the Virgin Futurity, um, he was he was there on the day as well, and finished third in the Champagne, and like fairy tale stuff, Galileo Chrome going on winning a classic, with Joseph O'Brien, like I couldn't have couldn't have dreamt of it to be honest, like that was, was nuts. I just want to go back even further, back to, to March and April time where you were out in Australia. It was kind of at, at the beginning of, of the lockdown here in Ireland. Of course, we're now in our, our second lockdown at the moment. But you went over to Australia to, to partner a day, a dual group one winner out there. Um, how does it compare? How did that success compare over there to, to group success in England? Um, I think I think to be honest, you know, success over there is, um, you know, it's wonderful and it's great. But... I couldn't help but think, you know, that that, that was my those were my first group one winners, and I couldn't help but think oh, I'd love that to have happened at home, you know, which is, uh, you know, a sign of, uh, I think anybody in any line of work wants to succeed on home soil, um, in front of in front of the people sort of that are, that are nearest and dearest, and um, it was definitely a case of that. But obviously, I was extremely proud to have, to have done that down there, and. Um, you know, I had a lot of luck there on, on the Australian horses and, and thoroughly enjoyed it. But uh, I was I was desperate to get back and um, try and get that sort of uh, maiden Group One in in England. How did it compare riding in Australia? I obviously I've never been or never rode out there um, back in the day. But when you're, I've often heard that they, they ride an awful lot tighter there than they do in the UK and Ireland. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very, I was actually speaking about it this morning with someone, you know, it's a very different feel to it. Like, you know, obviously we've we've seen recently, was it last year's Melbourne Cup, Cup they slapped Frankie with a 20-something day ban, which, I mean, over here you have to put someone through a fence intentionally to get that. Um, so literally <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a very different way of riding. Like, it's it's so competitive and, and the nature of it, there's so much prize money on offer in the, in the city. Um, which is where I was lucky enough riding most of the time. Like it's a, it's a, it's probably a lot more fine margins, tempo based racing where you have to be so on the ball. Um, like it, it, it just really sharpened me up, and you know I've no, I've no doubt going out there for the last what, three winters now has been pivotal in my success back here because you know that it's, it's such a good experience. Funny you should say that. I, I spoke to, to Fran Berry during the, the lockdown period and he actually said pretty much exactly the same thing, that his few stints abroad where he was riding against the top, some of the top riders in the, over the rest of the, the globe, that it sharpened him up no end when he came back to riding 
here in Ireland and, and the UK. So it's definitely it's interesting you, you mentioned that. But um I'm gonna fast forward again to the the third Saturday in October and it's uh, it's Champions Day. I can assume preparations were going pretty good at home. Yeah, we um we actually for once we managed to go go racing together. We drove well I drove down um to Ascot and it's um yeah, like uh, we've we've both got pretty different preparations for the races. Holly loves going through form and reading through races, watching all the horses replays that she's riding against. So I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, I'm not much of a form guru. I like to I like to know the horse I'm on and you know, the the rough base of a race, but I wouldn't ever um I would never delve into too much detail because I think, you know, for, for me personally, it, it, it doesn't work. Um, so I had, the, I, had, I had the music on quite loud on the way down there while she was trying to watch every single horse that was running up for the whole day, which, you know, but it, it, it's, it's amazing to think that you can have such contrasting approaches. And yet, I mean, to, to, to end up with the sort of same, uh, same finishing result is uh, amazing. Just to mention on Holly, um, Tom, like what what she's achieved this season, um, this has just been incredible. Yeah, I mean, as you, as you say, I think you know this season has been a real um, I don't know eye opener to a lot of people to the level at which she's she's hitting. Um, but I think you know, like last year was brilliant. She broke the record for the female sort of number of winners. But I mean, she's absolutely obliterated it this year. She's on one hundred and twenty. I don't know four or five maybe now. I'm, I'm, I've lost count. But um, you know, for 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 jockeys all over the country, like to be hitting those those sort of stats is is uh, a, a mission. Let alone on a year where we've had sort of two and a half months of no racing, like it's incredible. And you know, first group one winner, she's had big days. She, you know, she was winning on Dame Malia, Anthony Oppenheimer, and 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 people like that. You know, it, it's it's been a real sort of turning point in her career this season to for the sort of high end success. What do you think um, contributed to that, you know, the success this season? Just sheer hard work and, and look at the breaks or what, what would you put it down to? Yeah, genuinely, I think it's, it's, it is hard work, like, but not, not just in the aspect that most people would probably think, you know, she put a lot of time into uh, going to the gym and um, making sure that there was sort of no, no margin for error in that. And, you know, she gets up every day, rides out, grafts, and it's, it's just that, I like it. it amazes me. She just has that continual mentality of I've got to get up and do it or I won't succeed tomorrow, which I mean is amazing for someone that is like completely, uh, completely smashing everything that she does. Like she still wakes up thinking oh, I'll fail tomorrow if I don't do it today. So, you know, I think that's, um, that's probably, probably the reason that this sustained, sustained um, success is, is probably going to carry on for hopefully this a significant sort of while. Back to you, Tom. Back to Dave. Of course, they, he won the big one, the, the champion stakes. And I was surprised. I thought my concern going into the race was was stall number 11. I thought if, if you were drawn the widest of the field, um, I thought if, if anything, you know, he's a horse that likes to go forward. I thought you may be in trouble if maybe there was four or five that were going to go forward. And I couldn't believe how you just got into a, a beautiful position and the race panned out pretty perfect yeah it's amazing when you have these winners how how easy it feels looking back on them um but genuinely i mean you know he's a dream he is a dream rider it's easy to say after he's won um three group ones now but like in australia when he won the first group one i made the running on him second group one i sat two back on the fence and the other day, you can jump from the wide draw and just put him in a position, and, and he travels. He doesn't doesn't run keen, he doesn't end the race. He's sort of just right, and like you know, he's exceptional in the fact that his brain just sort of he's so so mellow, um, yeah, so willing at the same time. So you know, my life's easy. Stall eleven again, like as you said, it was always a worry, and um, but to be honest, it was probably a blessing because with Serpentine missing the break and then busting up. You know, you waste a lot of energy doing that, but obviously that was always their their game plan, and um, it was sort of ideal situation for me because it meant he was sort of part way beat before we even began, um, and the rest of the field started in, and you know you're just able to control control the race from that position because 
everyone almost has to play to your tune if you're if you're just holding up the field and just filling up they have to as well especially at a track like Ascot where you're racing around that top bend before you turn in you know you did they can't make any wild moves um so yeah, everything worked perfectly it's probably unfair to ask if is there any one standout moment of 2020 um but is there any number of ones that maybe you could that stand out was that yeah unfair? I, I like after all the fuss that's been made about this weekend, it would have to be that for me. I mean, obviously, a first first classic when it was incredible, but I, I don't know why this this weekend kind of struck uh, struck even more special to me uh, personally um, because I got to see Holly Rider first group one winner, and you know just the manner in which it happened. She didn't know if she'd won or not. I, it, I didn't want to say well done until we heard the photo and, and there's some brilliant pictures and videos of when she found well when we found out and, and heard the photo called and like just a pure elation and 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 then having a day going later in the day and I mean it, it was it was yeah it was fairy tale stuff like and, and having that shared success on the same day um was brilliant because it's never actually happened before. Like as much as we have good days in the saddle we end up up at the end of the country. So we don't really feel it or see it together, which is mad. And Tom, any plans for the winter? Yeah, I mean, like obviously with with the coronavirus, it's, it's um, sort of scuppered a few of them. Like I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, heading out to sort of Qatar for a day at a time and riding out there. And I did that quite a lot last winter and um, Dubai as well. But um, like obviously having to do a week quarantine when you get back um, messes that up quite a lot. But I'm hoping. Um, I'm hoping I'll get back to Australia early in the year, and that'll be um, that'll be that'll be great if I can because you know the the success that was had out there on on both the day band and their horses was um, was uh, sort of well, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I enjoyed it anyway. Put it that way. So uh, I'll I'll try and head back down there to get them, uh, if they'll have me back if they'll let me back in the country. <laughs> Yeah, they might look let you back in. I think they're looking into that. I think after a day's two victories, yeah, the home jockeys weren't too happy. That's it. Yeah, I heard that. But um, no, in all, in all seriousness, like the trainers down there are brilliant. They, you know, I obviously went back last winter and they stuck me on a lot of horses, and I'm I'm hoping they'll do similar this year. But um, even a day might head back if if things go to plan. So uh, it's a, it's a it's a different winter to normal, but. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to make something of it. Well, Tom, it's Friday evening. You had a winner at Doncaster today. It's getting late, so I'm not going to delay you any longer. But before I let you go, you have a busy day tomorrow afternoon. You're back at Doncaster with six rides. Chance of a winner? Yeah, a massive, massive book of rides, to be honest, on such a big day. I'm, I'm, as I said earlier, I mentioned state of rest for Joseph O'Brien in the, in the Vert Empty Charity. I think the extra furlong should definitely help him, as as with more cut in the ground. Um, and uh, Joseph seems uh, pretty good at this, uh, getting horses ready for the right races business. So um, looking forward to getting back aboard him. And also Ed Walker, sprinter, uh, came from the dark later in the day. He won he won pretty well up at Haydock uh, several weeks ago. And um, Ed's horses are absolutely flying. Like the last in the last four days had. Yeah, he's had something like six or eight winners. So, you know, the yard's in great form, which is always a good pointer. Well, Tom, it's been great to catch up. Thanks very much for taking the time. And I'll wish you the very best of luck tomorrow and over the coming months. Thanks a million. Not at all. Very kind of you.